Welcome back, everybody, to Cuso Grande, the Bad Video Game Tournament. I'm Brosentia, the host. Just so y'all know what's happening on this channel here over the next couple weeks. With GDQ coming up, it's going to be a little bit different. Tuesday, we normally have Don't Make Us Bored, but we will be passing on that due to... Uh, somebody scheduling a meeting with me at the exact same time that Don't Make Us Board would normally start. So I'm gonna have to go to a meeting instead. Yeah, I will try to stream later on Tuesday some Phasmophobia and probably later on in the week because we gotta do a little last minute practice. On Saturday, I will be traveling, so no Cusa Grande this upcoming weekend, nor the weekend after, because of GDQ. We're playing Phasmophobia at GDQ. Uh, I hope that you all watch and have some fun, and please come and donate if you are able, and if you're unable to donate, that is completely fine as well. As long as you come and have fun, I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. So... With that said, expect the next Cusa Grande matches after GDQ ends. We have had a lot of people here today. Thank you for all of the support, for all of the subs. This is helping keep me financially alive. Uh, and then after GDQ ends, we will start having a grudge match stream over on GDQ's channel. I'll be hosting that. Uh, running that and that will also help me stay a little bit more financially stable. So it like I, I feel like things are coming together right now. It makes me happy. Thank you everybody Now let's go ahead and let crappy take us over to the reveal the final reveal of the weekend Come on crappy take us away So here we have a GM giving out a one-hour video game the players will have one hour to make as much progress as they can. Whoever does will be the victor. Please welcome on in the GM, Donkey Clonk. Hey, Donkey Clonk, how you doing? Yeah, I had to throw Toasty in there. I just had to put a Toasty in there. It's very important. We got Toasty. We've got a wolf hugging, hugging a little shark boy. And a shark. I don't know if it's Shark Week here, but I like sharks. Oh, the blah, blah, yeah. Blow high. I don't know how to say it, blow high. Well, then why don't they spell it that way? They do only in Swedish. <laughs> well, maybe Swedish should change their alphabet. It doesn't make any sense. Blow high, blah, hodge. I'm going to go visit the blah, <laughs> Oh, this is this is really cool. Well, you know, you're Donkey Clonk. It's great to have you back this year as a GM. You uh, have been GMing, I think, for was it just the last tournament that you started with? Yeah, I started in six. Yeah, and uh, you uh, came out swinging with a lot of Commodore 64 games, uh, the occasional Amiga, but really the c64 type of person and i'm a little bit afraid are we getting a little bit more of that today uh, certainly we are getting commodore 64 but uh, the game i picked is a topical one uh, okay because this is a game to celebrate pride week pride month sorry ah week month year every every day is pride day in my heart uh, the subject of this game is a real forerunner uh, in terms of gay pride. Uh, they were really? censored uh, for being openly, overtly gay in their music and their music videos. They got banned what? on the BBC, they got banned on MTV, what? and they what? still reached uh, number one great musical success. Everyone live your life even uh, if we... it gets you banned from the BBC. But, oh, hmm. people are pointing out, I think we have a guess. Do we? Yeah, I see Frankie in chat. Okay. Well, you already figured. Then you already guessed the game because it's time to relax. Don't do it. When you want to go to it, relax. <sighs> we have Frankie yeah. goes to Hollywood for Commodore 64. Look, they're going to Hollywood. 
Is that what Hollywood looks like? I don't know. It's been a little while since I've been there. But yeah, Frankie goes to Hollywood, everybody. Frankie the computer game. Frankie the whatever. You know, I'm... I know nothing about i know literally nothing about this and i'm excited i had no idea this was going to be a pride month game uh, i don't know I, i'm sort of one of the weird uh people in the lgbt community who doesn't really like uh at least historically i haven't talked too much about like uh pride and all that stuff i'm like yeah i'm gay here i am that's pretty much it that that's me uh, but I guess, you know, now we have a game that can really... Re well, then again, I really, really like Lisa Frank. And I posted, like, Lisa Frank Bloodborne AI-generated bosses, and those were really cool. Okay, Lisa Frank definitely should have designed Bloodborne. But besides that, I, I don't know, maybe I am fairly open. Whatever, whatever. Happy Pride Month, everybody. I'm gay. Mm -mm. And I also see the Kusa connoisseurs in chat have already noticed what's at the bottom of that box art. Ocean? Ocean. Well, I mean, Ocean was the last game. Uh, Ocean's kind of a staple when it comes to Kusa Grande. <laughs> oh, I love it, everybody. I actually really like when our GMs bring up something that's a little bit topical. You know, we had... Even with the three versions of Top Gun yesterday, I, I got a little bit tired of some Top Gun, but I appreciated it. You know, having Pride Month and having something that uh, definitely historically relates to Pride Month is kind of exciting. We're going to get to learn more about it today, I assume, because I'm going to do some Googling to find out. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make it live for y'all. Yeah, public acceptance of being gay had progressed, but uh, the ages were really not a good time to be homosexual. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, the 80s, or honestly, any time up until very recent, even now in Utah, not a good time. Not, not the best time. Uh, it's perfect, and even the very best games can have those occasional lulls, dips in quality. Or uh, I was just speaking about uh, AIDS uh, in specifically. Are, to go one further by forcing players to suffer through one atrocious sequence, be it an unfairly difficult mission, an irritating <laughs> gameplay sequence, or a little and that's, 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 I guess, is playing one of his own videos in order to help us get audio. We got it. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, but yeah, the the 80s were a particularly bad time uh, for everybody in the LGBT community. Uh, just, I, I know that uh, being gay or lesbian is a lot more accepted now uh, than it was in the 80s. And is, is probably like the easiest, uh, easiest one to like sort of. Be okay openly discussing compared to uh, uh, other others in the, the the whole LGBT alphabet. Uh, it's easiest to talk about being gay or being being lesbian, and the others are still kind of very taboo in many places. And honestly, we just need to get rid of that taboo nature and uh, let people live their lives and be themselves. Okay, I think I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, because nobody's so, nobody individually should be considered a taboo. You should live your beautiful life. No, why, Kuchiri? Why are you posting a minion? Never mind. If you are a minion, get right out. Okay. But other than that, live your life. Don't be a minion. <laughs> <laughs> And here we go. We're going to do the countdown. Yeah, you can be a chocobo, I'm sure. Okay. You know what? Uh, 
I hate the minions so much. Why would you post that as a GIF in the Matt uh, chat? I'm I'm immediately deducting like five minutes. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, spam uh, rainbows in chat. All the ra you now have a milk bottle. Okay. Uh, so, was uh, how do you adapt a band as a computer game? And the apparent uh, solution is d with a door maze. No, I don't like that. Yeah, spam all of your rainbows, everybody. Keep them. All of your pride flags of any, well, of almost any sort. Unless it's like, I don't know. If it's a minion, don't do that. Please don't do that. I'm going to go ahead and say don't be a minion. Okay, otherwise, here we go. We've got some rockin' music here. Okay, I just need to... I'm making a mental note. I will have to adjust audio after the stream so that I don't destroy your ears. Chat. That's my hope. Okay, so this is a band that made yes. a video game. Um, or, Ocean or uh, licensed everything. Okay. I mean, that's good. Oh, they got a red herring. Does that help? Uh, I saw yes, pleasure the first, units. The first time you use an item, even if it's not a relevant item, or if you use the item uh, in a wrong place, you will get score. And this match is judged as a score attack. Okay. You need to have as many pleasure units as possible to win the match. Okay, and th uh, this it is looks a bit like of... Kuchiri might have a lot of pleasure. Is that the heart? Or is it the whatever's <laughs> left of the heart? Um, is it the all bars of on the right are irrelevant for the purpose of this game. Uh, but, uh, picking... <laughs> okay. but when you see a window open and it says that Frankie gives you a number of pleasure points, it also tells you your total number of pleasure points. Uh, and uh, that is your measure of score. Okay. I, I think I'm getting this. Oh, a floppy uh, disk. I hope that gives me pleasure. Hmm. Uh, probably the most important uh, tactic early in the game is to pick up cassette skip videotapes and use the videotapes on uh, TV sets. Okay. And that will take you into a mini game. And this, gotcha. uh, this game has a lot of uh, mini games. Uh, so the players are currently using uh, the using the crosses, the hearts, the bullets, and the sperm that they pick up immediately. Uh, they are the, actually the what? Uh, the sperm, the icon <laughs> to <laughs> that was. Oh my gosh, that is sperm! I just yelled that out loud in my house. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna yell that anymore. Uh, everybody, this is science, okay? And science is PG to PG-13, so we're good. Uh, mm. And uh, uh, Kashiri picked up a cat and a bowl of, bowl of milk, and that is a bit of a red herring, because you can't give the... Uh, the milk to the cat uh, without uh, putting in the milk in a bowl first, and uh, I also see that Lady One Rex has entered a mini game. Okay, this is interesting. I don't know what's happening. Uh, so Reagan is uh, bickering with this is 1985, so that would have been probably Nikita Khrushchev. Okay. This is a fever dream, and I love it. Ooh, uh, John B. Jones just uh, discovered a corpse, and uh, this is another mini game because now, you know when John, B. No. John B. Jones has entered the murder mystery, and solving Ooh. the murder mystery is one of the biggest uh, point caches in the game. Really? So from okay. So from now, when John B. Jones enters a room. Uh, he might or might not, uh, because it's all randomized, uh, get a hint regarding the killer. 
and uh, he would uh, need to traverse the entire map uh, to get all the clues required uh, to solve the mystery and then uh, re-enter the room with the corpse. Uh, pretty much uh, the most important thing for the players to do is to map out the door maze. Uh, I gave the players the manual, the manual the, the manual says you will need to take notes. Okay. So, just so you all know, I'm, I'm like trying to figure out exactly uh, a little bit more about this game. Uh, the band itself, uh, I thought it was just Frankie due to the title screen of the game, but no, it's Frankie Goes to Hollywood, which I probably should have known, but I didn't. Uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. They were an, a Sith pop band formed in 1980. Uh, you've got Holly Johnson, Paul Rutherford, Peter Gill, Mark O'Toole, and Brian Nash. Uh, I actually do not know very much about this band, though. As you can tell, I didn't even know their proper name. War! Oh no, that's a... Uh, this is one points. of the most infuriating mini games that uh, Lady One Rex is on because he. It looks like uh, those items are good because they are good elsewhere in the game, but here, no, you need to shoot them. And you don't even know that you can shoot them if you haven't read the manual. Uh, read uh -oh. the manual if the GM gives you the manual. Did you give them the manual? Uh, yes, because it's round one. If this was a later round, I would have given them controls and... <laughs> yeah, John B. Johns is a little bit confused and is just saying, what? <laughs> yeah, this game raises a lot of questions and uh, mostly what? Yeah. And I, I think that's fine, you know, trying to figure out what the crap you're even supposed to do. Uh, in a game like this, this is very much an experimental game. And I'd say that for uh, this specific band, this may be a very appropriate game to link with their name. Just because th th this is unlike any other game I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, this is Kusa Grande. In other mystery tournaments, you get puzzle games. Uh, you well, get. I mean... uh... Hey, Blasphemous Roar, are you listening? Huh? But no, in Kusa Grande, you get this. Wait. Okay, so I see that... What are these controls? I'm looking at the keyboard controls. 8 is up, U is down, H is left, J is right. Yeah, you're oh, so George Oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I actually, no, I can see how the controls work. Uh, it's very similar to, uh, what is it, QAOP, yeah. It's just less comfortable than that. And fire is spacebar, okay. Uh, so, in essence, what you need to do is just figure out how to move at first. And then uh, to actually grab things in general, it's the fire button. Fire plus right lets you reach out. But the, if you do fire and then right, then up, then you reach at about the shoulder height rather than your waist height. Uh, so you have to decide, are you going to be reaching or which height do you need to use in order to grab or interact with certain items? That's annoying. Uh, yeah, and if I hadn't given the manual, the players might have uh, uh, spent a lot of time figuring out how to enter doors, because you need to be in the cycle of the animation where you're facing the screen uh, to enter doors. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay, so the the manual actually has some good information about the various mini games that are in here murder mystery you will come across a body who was the killer solve the mystery by a process of elimination you have to find all the clues which appear in windows and apparently there are 23 of them uh, yeah and uh, you need to uh, as i said traverse the entire map uh, which is why i recommend the players to make a map of the door maze. And by the way, this is a non-Euclidean door maze. There are doors that are 
one way only. Yeah, I'd say that this is a non-Euclidean everything. Like, Euclid would look at this and say, What the crap is going on? I don't understand anything. Why? Why do you have a cat in your pocket? How does that work? Yeah. I don't know. Monster I don't know how you have a cat in your also discovered the corpse. Now, Belzebub, you're saying spheres are non-Euclidean? I don't think that's a true. Spheres can exist as a Euclidean object. It's just graphing along a sphere makes it a non-Euclidean two-dimensional graph. Uh, the killer uh, is a socialist. Uh-oh. Uh, so, the Kashiri just used a cassette tape in a proper way, but when you do that, it will open a small window, and you need to enter the window, and that is missable. Everything is... I don't know. Has average or Mrs. Average adores a hot beef curry same. Who doesn't? I mean, I guess people who don't eat beef. Okay, never mind. I answered the question. Uh, so let me read you the box copy of the games uh, to see if that makes things any clearer. Welcome okay. to the Pleasure Game. By the way, Frankie's big album was called uh, Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, and uh, uh, the music that's playing in the game is the song Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. You begin this extraordinary experience devoid of personality, an amorphous shape in the land of the mundane. Behind the facade of flying ducks and kitchen sinks, however, lies a giant web of drama and antique spun within the Pleasure Dome. Scrutinize, investigate, probe. Objects you take for granted may be the passport to success. Clues can be discovered everywhere. In this game of games, you will need the skills of an arcade king, adventurer, super sleuth, mastermind, and more. Frankie say, relax. Use the power of Zap to build the equation pleasure, sperm, war, love, and faith to its peak, when, if you respond brilliantly, you might enter the heart of the Pleasure Dome. Exclusive Ocean Twin Cassette Pack. See, everyone needs more sperm. That's what I'm getting here. They've got a lot of war. Not much sperm. Just my opinion, okay? You know, I don't know. I'm glad that they're trying to become real people, though. That's always nice. I love this. Some clues are more obvious to British players, uh, is a note that you put here. One clue references the Tory party, which is conservative. Yeah, uh, that would definitely yeah. be something that, uh, and if you're is American that and don't... I try to pay attention to world politics, but let me just say. That is because one of the clues is that a killer is a socialist. So the person who votes for Tory is not a killer. Ah. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. You know what? You can be a socialist and a murderer. You can be, you can be a Tory and a murderer as well, but, you know, not if the clues say otherwise. Uh, let me just say, every every time that I hear, like, a new phrase in British politics, it just sounds made up. I don't... Uh, so the like, minigame that played in one record on is really annoying. You can only bounce uh, the bullet, uh, which, by the way, looks like a condom, into the it, two uh, with your back. Otherwise, the bullet will hurt you. And by the way, you need to do this four times to complete the game. Where's your health? Uh, your health, in this case, is the bullet. And the, there you saw uh, the bullet oh, drain yeah, yeah, the later yeah. one, Rex. Uh, your war level goes down. Yeah. Uh, yes, like... and uh, if you have a bullet in your inventory, uh, the game will 
reward you for using it because you can access the inventory in this mini game. Oh, really? Almost out of time, Lady Rex. Can you do it? How much of a and real you, person are you now? And when you fail the mini game, it will kick you out to a random location, uh, uh, a random row of houses on the map. There are four rows of houses uh, and <laughs> the th three unique color palettes. I have no idea. I have no idea. This is a fever dream and a half. And I feel like the players are starting to real, like, the important thing is to figure out how to navigate the fever dream. Uh, honestly, uh, we can usually have very good tips for platformers, things that you want to try in order to make progress. Something like this, it's like, I would normally suggest, you know, if you get something like this, Becoming religious and just hoping that whatever religion you have is right and that it'll help you. <laughs> because holy cow, this is this is nuts. It's going to work for certain people. Some people are going to be able to figure it out. Some people just won't. And you never really know what type of person is going to get it until the game appears. Let's see. Uh, okay. One so, of the most important one of the most important items in the game uh, is the key. If you find the, the key and the locked door, then you can enter an area where you can access uh, mini games without having cassettes, because you will eventually run out of the uh, uh, video cassettes. Okay, so yeah, the. Oh, the killer is an avid reader. That means that they are not conservative. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna get in so much trouble. Oh. Monsanto has stumbled upon perhaps the meanest clue that uh, the game has, which is that the killer, a character, is a July baby, and the the killer is a Tory, and you you'd better know your star signs. Uh, I mean, that's fair enough. Gotta, gotta figure it out. Gotta, gotta know. I feel like knowing horoscopes isn't the most important thing in life, but that would be fine. Actually, considering that I live in an extremely conservative place, uh... You know, there, there are actually some, like... When you live in somewhere that is, like, extremely conservative, but somehow actually does some things right, it's kind of nice. Like, uh, I, I was talking, I think I mentioned, was it to Corndan or somebody else? Uh, maybe Gilder Sneeze? That, uh, essentially, uh, while we are a very conservative, uh, place in Utah, like, even for Utah, it's extremely conservative. Uh, we are oh. still a Tree City, uh, and part of Tree City USA. We actually, like, conservation is super important here, and I'm like, yes! They do something right here, you know? Uh, Lady One Rex uh, and uh, the key. Uh, she used the key on the door. She now has free access to the minigames. That is huge for Lady. Yeah. Uh, and now Lady Rex is bouncing around a crucifix. Are you playing as Jesus' brother? Probably. Who was it? He's a kitty? Something like that? Yeah. Anyways, anyways, let me just go ahead and say that, like, uh, there, there's there been a lot of divides when it comes to uh, uh, politics, and for very good reason, because the last several years have sucked a lot. Uh, but at the same time, you know, with where I live, uh, there have to be some people who actually, like, 
uh, are willing to compromise and think about uh, things. And uh, luckily, you know, Utah is a very weird place because while it gets some things very wrong, it gets some things surprisingly right. Uh, for example, at least during the 2016 election, uh, compared to pretty much every other conservative state, Donald Trump was extremely unpopular here. Extremely. Enough that, like, while I say that, he still, like, won the majority vote uh, because it's Utah. But uh, an independent runner almost beat him out, like, which is shocking. That's not what happens here. And Kushira got trolled by the spawning minigames, because if the minigame uh, spawns on top of you, you need to walk out of it and then into it. That's a little annoying. Oh yeah, and then uh, one of the strange things is that somehow Mitt Romney, like, one of the most prominent Mormons in political, uh, in current political history, he's actually not the worst. How does that happen? You know, we freaking have Mike Lee here. Uh, and yet, you know, we managed to get Mitt Romney in office and he is semi-decent. And I oh. don't know how. Oh, Lord, Lady Wanrix is in the Sea of Sphincters. This is the worst minigame by far. Is that what it's actually called? Might as well be. <laughs> but, like, he's actually voted along with, uh, like, the Democrats on several issues. And, uh, I actually, like and has vocally opposed a lot of the uh, people in the conservative party. And I am definitely cool with that. He's got issues, but out of pretty much all of the, all, all of the conservative people over uh, on Capitol Hill, I can, ex like, I'm glad that he's there. But some of them back in line, yeah. Okay, anyways, blah, 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 blah. Let me see if I can find the... Inf I'm going to stop talking about Mitt Romney. Like, video games are inherently political. It's going to come up every once in a while. Uh, and considering that you literally have a war gauge in this game, it's only inevitable that that's going to happen. Wait, Kuchiri's pleasure is doubled now? What does that mean? It means nothing, because that... Uh, pleasure is how pleasure and pain only affects the minigame. Oh, okay. I want more pleasure. Ooh, Lady One Rex uh, finished this uh, terrible minigame. What? what? No, let, let me just go ahead and say uh, that. What I'm saying is actually not a hot take uh, when it comes to uh, Mitt Romney because he actually has made people in Utah angry enough, at least the conservatives in Utah angry enough, that he might not win the next election. So I would say Mitt Romney, hashtag not the worst, is, an, is a correct statement there. Uh, I don't know if yeah. the lady is softlocked uh, because uh, she missed. Yeah, because she went to the bottom and then missed the door. Oh, I mean, hopefully the sphincters will help Lady Rex out, please. Yeah, let's hope so because this is a game that really has no game over us. It also seems to be not reliable. Yeah, because you cannot uh, adjust just your height. Yeah. One interesting thing also uh, I want to bring up, uh, people are talking about various places that they may or may not want to live. 
The weird thing about Salt Lake in Utah is that while Utah is a very, very conservative and highly religious uh, area of the country, Salt Lake is a weird gay mecca. Uh, in fact, like there is a huge uh, LGBT community, especially in Salt Lake. If you come out to the West and you're not in California, Salt Lake is the next best place for LGBT people. It's extremely tolerant. Uh, and honestly, uh, I, I would say that a lot of the city is very progressive, especially uh, areas closer to downtown. So yeah, it, it's something that would probably surprise a lot of people hearing that, uh, but it's actually pretty good. Recommended. Oh no, I heard the Dragnet theme. Good job, Kachiri. 30% a real person, that's great. John B. John's up to 23%. Yeah, except we're measuring by pleasure points and not uh, percent. But no, what's, what's great about Salt Lake, I think that the Gay Pride Parade is officially the largest parade that the, that the state has every year. Uh, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that like Salt Lake is actually a really decent place for people. Uh, by the way, I, I think you may need it to consider if Lady Rex is softlocked, if is there anything that can be done in order to get out of this? Or is this something that we should inform her that she is not going to uh, be able to get out of? Oh, she's she on the bottom into... now. There's the door. Yeah, there that, we that go. There was no self lock. She is finally out of there. Woo. Right, that was concerned. Right a cloud to the, the halos. Uh, so the halos, which are on the right of the screen, are extra lives. So you can only move to the right if you are touching the cloud, and the hit detection on the cloud is miserable. Mr. Straight was a July baby. Mr. Straight. I don't like you, Mr. Straight. Yeah, the thing is, like, I hope that the players are taking notes as they're playing this, because if not, this is going to be a nightmare to keep track of any of this. Uh, and considering that you have to guess correctly. You don't, but uh, it's the biggest cache of points in the game. Oh, okay, you have to guess correctly if you want the points. Then yeah. Okay. So, various minigames that you have. Obviously, we're watching the murder mystery on a lot of the screens right now. Uh, do you enter other minigames during the murder mystery? Uh, yes, you do. Oh, okay. Uh, so you've got the murder mystery. There's also the Corridors of Power, uh, which essentially allows you to move at will within the dome and connect with Mundanesville. Uh, you observe, observe the color of manhole covers located along its path. Fireballs emerge from the manhole, zap them, and you'll create additional exits. I don't know exactly what that means, but it can help you move around in the game, I guess? Okay, Monhunzer is trying to get the sperm into the right location. Which I believe is up left. You have to get it where the zappy lightning is. Uh, yeah, you have to guide uh, uh, the sperm into the lightning. I don't know. It's so difficult. Okay, you gotta get the sperm into the lightning, everybody. Welcome to Cuso Grande. Where that is a sentence that has officially been said. GDQ, if you're watching this uh, in order to evaluate how the show is going to go over on your channel, I promise you we will not have a game about bouncing sperm around and trying to get it into the lightning. Okay? I promise!
yeah, this, this is, look, I'm not normally going to say sperm unless it's relevant to what is happening on the screen. And usually in that context, it would not be happening on my screen. It's just not allowed. But literally we're bouncing it around as if the sperm is a screensaver. It doesn't move like a sperm, it moves like a screensaver. It's not just one, it's two of them. The... Okay, yeah. So there you go. Mon Hunzer is currently having some dialogue here. Not much back and forth, just back. <laughs> This is a game. This is certainly a game. It's still PG-13, we're fine. Like this, I think you could almost, depending on the country, this would pass as PG. Gotta be honest, like, but probably PG-13, this game. Yeah, I'd say that this doesn't cross that. Sure, there's a murder. But we, there's no blood. There's no love. I mean, actually, there's a love gauge. Okay. And it's so abstract and weird that who cares? Okay, so the, the, the game that you were talking about uh, that Lady T-Rex or Lady Rex was stuck in is called the Sea of Holes. Yeah, that's right. The Sea of Holes. Go in and that's... out of time and space to reach the floor beneath you. Weird. <laughs> That's not much better than a sphinx that, that I called it. <laughs> oh, you called it that? Wait, you wrote up all of that? Uh, no, this is uh, the manual from the game, except oh, for the GM the... note. Okay, that's the official manual uh, note. By the way, the part where you were playing Breakout, sort of in a cybernetic room trying to get the sperm into the lightning is called cybernetic breakout yeah that's right it's just called breakout it's literally breakout okay uh, so uh, in this room john john the johns ahead. can touch uh, the map and enter a mini game from that without using a tape Ooh. Mrs. Average thinks alcohol is bad for you. She's a teetotaler, Mrs. Average. The killer's a Taurus. Tauren? Yeah. I don't... I, I would have to Google what time of the year that is. I'm not sure. Uh, it's around May. Okay. Like, yeah, in... Where I live, like... Uh... The Zodiac, strangely not very popular here. Uh, like, yeah, we're all about the essential oils, but Zodiac, nah. Okay, April 20th through May 20th, uh, says Scheming Miner. Okay, okay. Uh, Gemini is early June per Alapex. Good to know. Look, I'm a Libra. And that's all I need to know. I'm the balance. I'm gonna balance your butts. Yeah. Oh, I'm the judge. I'm a judge. I run Cusa Grande. It's the perfect zodiac sign for me. Ha ha! Well, good, good. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, Donkey Kong, about the game. Uh, Kusoe in general, uh, has a couple different... Look, looks like oh, sorry, John I still is having problems distracted uh, entering by the minigames. Has John B. John's never entered a minigame? Uh, it seems he... He might have, but he's not entering them consistently. Huh. Weird. But, you know, I... I guess if you're not running around and checking the things that you need to check, that is possible. Uh, yeah, Kusoge generally either uh, embraces the bad or the weird, which oftentimes there's a crossover between the two. I would say that this game is 
Like, if you were to pick up this game and expect something typical, this is a bad game. This is not typical at all. Uh, it's absolutely bizarre. Uh, but at the same time, I'd say that so far, this is fairly well made. Like, there's actually a way to see uh, progress. There is a way to uh, get through it. It's just not at all what you would expect from a video game. This is absolute Kusoge. Oh yeah, this is, this is definitely a round one pick for me, the weird side of Kusoge. Uh, this was extremely well received in the uh, contemporary press. Uh, this is a game from 1985. Yeah, I imagine that, honestly, uh, games that came out on the Commodore 64, especially those were that were in a limited area, often tended to be a little bit more experimental than what got shipped over to the U.S. Uh, I can say that, you know, thinking of Rags to Riches, uh, which is hilarious, any of the games where you're, like, a drunk trying to get home... Uh, were things that never really made it over here to the U.S. and that's fine. They were they were hilarious, you know. Uh, comedy games oftentimes ended up being big, but that's uh, also because you didn't have Nintendo cracking down on censorship. Uh, thank you, Nintendo USA, Nintendo America. Yeah. Uh, the band Frankie Goes to Hollywood actually had input on this game, and one of the things that uh, they vetoed was a talking moose head. Everything else in this game, uh, the band was perfectly fine with. They vetoed a moose head? A talking moose head. Why? But why? Sorry, I'm very interested in that. Uh, by the way, the, per the music that you hear right now was made by a guy named Fred Gray, who did a lot of music from old school Commodore 64. You remember the awesome never-ending story Commodore 64 music? Yeah, it was Fred Gray. You also had... Oh, where is it? Roadrunner? That's not what I was looking at. Eco... Black Lamp, that's the one that sounds like, uh, what's it called? Green Sleeves. And it's a really, really good Commodore 64 version of Green Sleeves. Like, it rocks, unironically. Uh, this person who did the music is just a legend over in the UK for uh, the music that he did for Commodore 64. Absolute star. Thank you, Fred. The artist for this, Karen Davies, uh, did do some other games from around the time, but also did some graphics for Robocop 2, so I don't want to talk about you anymore. <laughs> Mind you, that was the Amiga version of Commodore 64, not, not any of the other versions. <laughs> uh, oh, John B. John entered the corridors of power, and now he no longer needs uh, uh, the tapes, but... Uh, John B. Johns will require me to be able to find the store. Okay, John B. Johns looks a little bit confused. Yeah, this appears to be the labyrinth, right? Where you go through and try to find one of the other exits. However, it appears to be a, a little bit like the first person uh, single screen labyrinth that you would have, like, for old-school NES games, I'm thinking Gogo 13, possibly Fester's Quest. It's just a little bit hard to tell that this is... that you're going somewhere. Except for the outline. The, the color outline is what is really indicating that you're moving. Uh, yeah, and I think John might be flipping between two screens, uh, because Amazing isn't was supposed to work like this. I don't know. I, I don't know. Ah, there we go. Oh, uh, Chad is correcting me. He did Black Lamp on Atari, not Commodore 64. Tim Fallon did 
Black Lamp on Commodore 64. Whatever, it's got to be good on, Ami or on Amigas. Well, right? Some of the people who worked on this, by the way, also worked on Brian the Lion, and that is one of the Kusoge that we have had on the stream before. Uh, there are some people who also want to point out that there's a word called bakage, uh, which is in general uh, more of an emphasis on the weird. Baka is basically idiot. So bakage, uh, bakage would be idiot game or, you know, emphasis on the strange weirdness there. Uh, however, I, I tend to not differentiate between the two when it comes to games that are fitting for the tournament. Uh, especially early on, we like giving people weird stuff for the first time that they've played the game. You know? New music, everyone. What? We get different music? What? I think it's Kuchi ever you're capturing for, for music, yes? Uh, Monhunzer is asking, by the way, in Discord, if they are softlocked. Is that a softlock? I don't know what it is. It is a black screen. There is one okay. door where you need to use the light switch uh, before you enter it. And if you move around so that you're not in front of the door and you can't go back through the door, then you have a problem. It's a solvable problem, uh, but a problem nonetheless. Okay, Kuchiri has guessed. Trying oh, to figure that out is a huge is amount of points that uh, Kuchiri lost. And you can still, I don't know if Kuchiri, well, Kuchiri has an option to guess again? I don't think she will get the points, though. What? 3,000 more pleasure points? Okay. Uh, this game is That's... weird. I don't know. Well, I, I... Yeah, because the manual said that you would have to restart the game entirely in order to uh, do the whodunit part. But, heck, if you, if you can still get the points on a second attempt. So, here's the deal. Uh, we have let Monahunzer know that this is not a soft lock, and instead, what you have to do is wander around and find the door in the dark if you uh, don't have a lamp or something. So, Monahunzer is actually playing the game right now. You just can't see or hear that anything is happening. Why? Because, welcome to Cusa Grande. Uh, by the way, important thing to note, if you're watching and you're going to be playing Cusa Grande in the future, uh, you are welcome to ask if you are softlocked. And it's good that Monhunzer has done so because Monhunzer is now out and doesn't have to restart the game. Well, also welcome to the Pleasure Dome. I don't know what the Pleasure Dome is. I don't know what a Pleasure Dome has. Uh, Does it Frankie, have Frankie couches? Frankie Hollywood's album was called The Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. What do they have in the Pleasure Dome, though? Good music, I hope. Yeah, is there anything else? Pleasure. Okay. Like, what about those, like, weird head scratchers? You know, the, the ones that, like, look, at first they look like they're going to... Uh, poke you in the eye and poke your eye out, but then they feel really, really good. Do they have those? What it's about warm blankets? Like, warm blankets. Like, freshly out of the dryer. They better have those. Um, I'm afraid you would have to go to the comfort dome for those. Ah! Dang it. really glad this game exists. I want you to know. Because while this is absolutely almost incomprehensible, at the same time, there's something strangely compelling about it for me. Like, I'm... I want to see somebody make it to the Pleasure Dome. Uh, you would need to get 100% for that. 
But the Cal but Cordial of Power is it. a good place to be. Is it dome shaped? Okay, Mon Hunter is at the shooting gallery, I guess. Gotta reload. Uh, yeah, let's shoot. If you don't even shoot, you have to reload. Oh. Uh, the shooting gallery is really annoying because you need uh, to hit all nine shots uh, to complete it. You can't really? miss once. And you, do, and you see how bad the controls are over the crosshair. Yeah, it's uh, the like place... always drifting back to the bottom. Did the log uh, meter go up after shooting that guy in the forehead? I think it did. Uh, by the way, the song right now is called Two Tribes, and it has... If someone asked me, uh, Uncle, what were the 80s like? I would show them the music video for Two Tribes. It is an iconic 80s song with an equally iconic music video. Okay. And it's not Could... risky like the music video for Relax which uh, n nobody should look at on a PG-13 stream. You mean risque? Does it uh, show... Uh, How is it risque? Well, never mind. I can go ahead and watch it later. I'm gonna watch that later without all y'all nerds here. I'm gonna go watch some risque videos. Music videos. Honestly, you know, I, there's part of me that can understand, like, I feel like art shouldn't be censored, but I also understand that art has a specific place, and uh, if you are showing art, uh, I'm trying to think, there should be a venue for pretty much uh, most types of art. Uh, but also, there, there are certain places where uh, I think it's understandable that certain types of art may not be the best to have it show up. Uh, like, if you know that they're going, like PBS, if you have kids watching Sesame Street and then suddenly music video shows up and uh, it's relax, then maybe that's not going to be the best. You know, they're watching Sesame Street. Yeah. And it's good for them to be exposed to art, but maybe they can be exposed to that kind of art a different time, you know, later on in their lives. Or maybe it's not even... I don't know. I don't know. I don't have kids. I, I feel like I, I don't really have it much weight when it comes to things like that, but yeah, don't like I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But then again, they had Brian Swords of York's art on I think it was PBS, so I don't know what to say anymore. Yeah, you got Freedom of expression is important, but uh, there should also be s more family-friendly venues. Yeah, I'd say uh, it's important to be able to have freedom of expression, but also uh, the venues, you know, the venue should be allowed to be to exist, is what I would say. You know, you should be able to have the have the venues. And as long as the venues uh, are allowed to exist, then great. If the venues themselves are banned and, uh, like, you're not allowed to share certain types of art just because people disagree with them, then it it's it's a little problematic. I don't know. I'm, I'm very much a... Somebody who, even though I run a PG slash PG-13 stream uh, and try to keep things family friendly, I still really believe that uh, censorship is a problem and that, you know, uh, people who are expressing art, especially when, uh, you know, when, when it is about uh, love and intimacy, I feel like there should be a place where that can be allowed. With that said, playing Breakout with Sperm, 
absolutely should be allowed on family-friendly streams. Uh, by the way, this is an extremely close match. I have uh, Lady One Rex at 30,900, uh, John B. John says 29,900, and Kushiri only 500 points behind at 29,400, uh, and uh, Monster Hunter at 22,400 is solidly in force. Yeah, uh... Actually, uh, okay, I'm also going to say that a lot of the times, uh, art, part of the art is people's reaction to what is being said or portrayed in the art. So, uh, you know, they're, like, people can write characters that are going to be controversial. People can oh, portray you... characters that are controversial. In fact, it's kind of essential when it comes to writing, you know, just because there is a terrible character doesn't mean that, that that every character that a person writes represents an actor or represents the author. You know, that's just absolutely not true. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kushi Kushiri found out that uh, he can shoot inside the corridors of power, which is actually... Uh, which is actually big progress because the game gives you a point for shooting the sparks inside the corridors of power. I hate this game. But I love it, but I hate it. Uh, everybody, this is the last game of today. We are ending on the fever dream of this. Frankie goes to Hollywood. I don't even know if we have seen Hollywood. We have seen downtown London. Maybe not Lon downtown, like the suburbs of London. We have seen war over F and T and G, you know. The famous FTGH war. Uh, we have seen a kitchen. We have seen laundry. We have seen buttholes. We have seen sperm breakout. We haven't seen Hollywood. Oh, FGTH. Uh, uh, that's what Frankie goes to Hollywood in the war game. That is Frankie goes to Hollywood. But Hollywood's not there. Yeah, this and is... as, that's meant to be Liverpool, as uh, stated uh, uh, by Paul S. in the chat. Uh, this minigame is called Raid Over Merseyside. Okay. And the band is uh, from Liverpool. <laughs> Just... I, I love that you can tell how people are doing uh, when they're playing games based off of how much they've talked in discord and out of all the matches that we've had today this has had the most talking as well as the most reaction gifts asking for the game to stop but there is no stopping until the hour is here uh, i'm and trying to i'm trying to keep a close <laughs> eye on the, the scores so good that you're keeping track of the the match chat i'm yeah i'm trying to keep, keep track of all the the important stuff i guess one interesting thing to note, by the way, Kachiri is on to the shooting game, and it's apparent uh, if you've ever played any of the old school shooters, a lot of them only allowed you to have one bullet on the screen at a time, and that is definitely true with this one. And that's a like for clearing out some of uh, what this nerd is shooting. Uh, or to clear out some of his wall, that's very helpful, but it is annoying for actually trying to deal any damage because he's got a lot of time to dodge. And it looks like his AI is really good at dodging as well. Yeah, you can pre you can cheese this uh, minigame a bit by shooting at uh, the top because the AI has a tendency to move towards the top. Yeah, I... Okay, if if you can cheese it that way, then great. None of the players have learned that. <laughs> but yeah, a ah, lot Chad of... Chad is saying that the relax music video, the reason why we can't watch it on my stream is because it's basically set in a gay BDSM club. And I would go ahead and say, kids, if you're watching... Don't Google any of those terms right now. But when you're 18, go ahead, please. 
Uh, you, I will go ahead and allow, uh, in fact, maybe encourage you to learn about the world here. Yeah, I but, chose this and for watch Pride that video, Month. Yeah. I chose this for Pride Month because this band uh, made a game with a capital gay. Game with a capital gay. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah, and feel free to ask your parents, and if you do and you get in trouble, then, uh, blame the man. <laughs> blame the status quo. Uh, actually, I think, I think that, uh, you know your parents better than I do. If you think you could get in trouble asking your parents, just hold off. Don't worry about it right now. Don't do that. But if your parent, like, I think parents should, in general, be a little bit more uh, willing to discuss, or at least talk about some of the some of the questions that people have. I'm pretty sure, even though I grew up in a very religious area, I'm pretty sure, like, I understood a lot of what was going on in media, at least when I was a teen. Yeah. Uh, no, do kids do not ask your parents to go to a BDSM club. You, no, no, do not do that. You will get in trouble and you'll be grounded. Draxy, that is terrible advice in chat. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there we go. This is a family friendly stream. And by that, I mean, I can at least tell you what is going to be acceptable to ask your parents if your parents are halfway uh, cool. And at, you, yeah, even the coolest parent, you do, don't ask to go. Don't you dare, don't you dare. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, as for other questions, you decide. You decide if it's something that you should or can ask, because I, uh, I'm not your dad. I'm not your parents. I don't know. You know, these planes are very... I'm just watching on Mana Hunter's screen, the planes fly in a very specific direction. Is Southwest. Maybe it's Southwest Airlines. Mm. Wrong! Sorry, Lady Rex, you got the answer wrong. The killer has no children. That seems so rude to just yell out wrong. It, it's weird that you actually can get multiple guesses. Maybe the amount of points that you would get goes lower. Do you have any idea who's winning? I have no idea. Uh, Lady One Rex is winning. John Beyonce has 31,400, and I don't know I, how much uh, Kushiri has. Well, maybe uh, Kushiri we'll get and uh, the John Beyonce uh, seem like they're very close. Frankie does espionage. I think Frankie does a lot of stuff in this game. I think Frankie breaks hearts. Yeah, John B. Jones is going really slow right now in trying to make sure that he gets the guess right. I don't know if he knows. Yeah, because uh, the manual, as I stated, as you stated, was is ominous. It says you need to reset the game, which you don't have to. You just... Uh, I really hope uh, John Bidjans doesn't reset the game, uh, because all that means is you won't be able to complete the game. Don't, don't reset, don't reset, don't reset. I mean, you only have a minute left. Just go back in. That's all you have to do. Well, never mind. Leaving. Yeah, how are we gonna see how many how many uh, pleasure points John B. John has and Monhunter? How, how much how pleasured are you? Uh, come on, Kashiri, shoot a spark, mm. then you will get and points. It looks for like it. it just knocks your some of your like heart points down if you guess wrong. But I don't know if it does anything else. Okay, John B. John's 
Use the map again. Gonna go make another guess? I think so. John B. Jones, this is the right move with only uh, half a minute left. But you gotta get it right soon. Gotta get it right. Like, there's only 15 seconds left if you don't get it right right now. Oh, 23,200 points for Monhunzer. Yeah, that's, okay. that is, is in fourth. Come on! Uh, due to stream delay, there may be a little bit of a separation, but I don't think John B. Jones managed to do it in time. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, still getting the answer wrong. That is time. We are done. That is it for the stream. JK, we, we got to do a little bit of a rundown for how the matches went, but that is time. Frankie goes to Hollywood for the Commodore 64. What a fever dream and a half. Oh, geez. Okay, Kuchiri apparently got 31,900 points. I'm glad that some of the players are keeping track of their own points. Monhunzer did get 23,200. Lady believes that she passed 32,000. John B. Johns likely passed 30,000. We would probably want to go and yeah, review we need, we this need just to make sure. Between, we need replays for John and Kuchiri, but Lady was about 39,000. Lady won Maxi solidly in first, uh, Monsanto solidly in fourth. We need to go to takes for Kuchiri and John B. Johns. Yes, uh, so I'll go ahead and say that we are going to be reviewing the tapes. It appears that the other players uh, did come in uh, the places that they mentioned. Kuchiri second, Jumbie Johns third, Mon Hunzer fourth, but we are not 100% sure. Hello there, lady, and welcome. We believe that you took the victory today. Oh, that... Uh, I hate that maze so much. That maze is... So... There was a period where I was just pressing down for like 10 consecutive rooms, and it was just an endless hallway, and then I go back up, and it's like, hey, here's a different room. Like, what? Oh, no. Here's the deal. It took me about 40 minutes to realize you were going into mazes in the game. Uh, so, yeah, like, being an observer didn't help. <laughs> also, I just want to give a quick shout out to a part where the manual just straight up lied because it said with the murder mystery yeah. that, I, that if you're wrong, you need to restart the game. And I got yeah. it wrong and I just kept guessing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it lied. I do wonder, there's a possibility that it gives you a lower amount of points if you guess wrong. Uh, although I'm really not sure, you know, that's just my guess and perhaps in order to get enough points to go to the pleasure dome you have to get it right on your first try yeah, i don't maybe. know i do not need the u.s national anthem playing on the stream right now because this was the least u.s video game i think we've ever had yeah i was very confused about i think that was supposed to be political competitive space invaders uh, political space invaders? Wait, do you mean like the two talking heads? Yeah, the two or, talking heads. Yeah, the, I mean, the minigame was called Talking Heads, but yeah, it was just like two pundits yelling at each other, I think. Uh, and then you had the weird, uh, Donkey Kong called it the Sphincter Room. Uh, with the, the, the... The, with the holes that you had to keep going into in order to get oh, lower and lower. Oh, that weird teleporting room. Oh, God. Oh, uh, when, when my controls had locked up for a brief second while I was in that room, so I was worried I was going to be stuck in there, but then I got back down to the bottom and it opened up the exit again, like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah, that is the worst minigame in the game, and there are some pretty bad minigames. Yeah, yeah, like that, that weird Cloud Devil mini game. Like, I have no idea what was up with that one. I, I saw it a couple times, and I'm like, I'm not sure what this is. But I'll, you know, if if anybody manages to play that okay, then good job. 
I very rarely do we get to the end of a game and I still don't know how like most things work. I know like I know how a few things work because Donkey Kong like informed me, but yeah, we had we very much had uh we we very much had Dora mazes and we had breakout with sperm and we had the Don't fucking ask. DVD screensaver rooms. <laughs> the what? DVD <laughs> screensaver rooms? Yep. What? What did you just say? This is a family-friendly stream. <laughs> you can say sperm. You can say sperms. <laughs> hey, they weren't all sperms. Some of them were the cross. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can play Jesus Breakout. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, well, that's cool. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, I think that I would be absolutely over the moon getting a game like this if I were to play it, but that's because I love not understanding games that I'm playing. This has been a trip and a half. Holy cow. Yeah, this this game has definitely been a wild ride. I might go for just a tiny bit longer after the stream just to see if I can figure anything else out. Yeah, honestly, and... I, I'd say that uh, with this game, I... I would definitely say this is not a good game. This is not a game that I would recommend to people, but it still is compelling in a way that is difficult to describe because it, it's fascinating. Like there's logic to it, but at the same time, it's so weird. It's a weird, it's a weird type of logic that uh, you, you just are not going to find in anything outside of this game. It's a one, there's no yeah, one of a kind game. That's what this is. Also, yeah, my, this... my score just popped up on my end. It was thirty nine thousand two hundred, apparently. Yeah, you won. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's pretty guaranteed to be a victor score there. Uh, honestly, just managing to land scores in certain ways, especially for the murder mystery. You know, you finally did guess that right, right? Yeah, like, I, it took a few guesses, but I managed to get it in the end, thankfully. Oh, I saw John B. John's right at the end, just going through all of the options over and over again, trying to guess, and unfortunately did not get it in time. Uh, and Whoa. it's a hefty score. It's like 3,000 points uh, from the time that I saw Kuchiri get it. Uh, so, yeah, uh that, that's a decent boost. That... I don't know if that would have been enough to move John B. John's uh, from a place, but it still was significant. Yeah, depending on that theory on if it, on if getting it right sooner would get you more points, that might have been enough to, to either give John B. second, or if, if it was enough points, maybe even ahead of me. Who knows? Maybe. Well, thank you for being part of this fever dream. I feel like life will never be the same. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> with that and said, is there anything that you need to, <laughs> that, that you would like to plug or let people know is coming up? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really have any, I don't really have anything to plug, just, I, I, honestly, I'm just glad to be here. Ah, I'm glad you are too, it's always a joy to have you, seriously, I, I, uh, every time I talk to you, it's an absolute pleasure, I'm glad that you're here. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's that's good to know, according to this game, I'm only like 23% a real person. <laughs> I mean, who <laughs> is it, you know? Yeah. That's about right. Well, everybody, that is going to be it for today. Now, later on Tuesday, I'm going to try to have a stream. We are not having Don't Make Us Bored because somebody, uh, Mike Yama, uh, decided to schedule a meeting right when it starts so uh, i'm not going to do that but i'll try to possibly have a stream later that night uh and later on this week for sure because we've got phasmophobia at gdq this next weekend uh after gdq is over streams will definitely get back to normal we had a fantastic opening weekend for kusagrani i'm glad that everybody came the best way to help the stream grow is to share clips, to share things that you like, scare, scare shrink, screenshots, I don't know, share them. You can scare them too, I don't care. Uh, but yeah, let, let people know about what's going on uh, because the more people that we have learning about Cusa Grande, the more that we can have reliable 
uh, streams and reliable money to keep it going. Yeah. Beware, thank you for the gift subs. I think that puts us over 200 sub points. So thank you so much. For now, Woo! let's go and raid Peace Egg. Peace Egg is practicing Phasma. I don't know if I'll join right away, but if Peace Egg is going in an hour or two, I may just have to jump in. So do we have a good raid message chat? One that won't scar Peace Egg? <laughs> yeah, maybe something not related to sperm. <laughs> No sperm quotes, please. You are now 32% oh, so of a real person. I, oh, that's pretty good. You are now 32% of a real person. There we go. Go tell Peace Egg about the current person status. And all of you parents, I apologize a little bit about how much you're going to have to explain. But whatever, it's your job as a parent. See you all later! Take care, and hopefully you all have fun. Bye, Lilo. Bye, bye, Donkey Kong. Bye, bye lady. Bye. <laughs> okay, I'm.